This is where we hold them! This is where we fight! This is where they die! So let's get straight to it. So we've got the attribute tree. There's many ways you can actually go about it, which is interesting. It's kind of one of the main reasons I think Dex Assassins are so easy to create with different variations because both strength and dexterity just scale really well for a lot of the weapons and they have amazing perks within the actual attribute tree. So let's talk about this side. This is what I would recommend going for the Sword and Shield Spartan Hunter build. And 250 Dex being the kind of core you know, prime line towards a 150 con. 150 con, you could go down to 100 con, but 150 con is just that sweet spot where you can actually duel and challenge players who are just as high skilled as you are. And by having that additional two pieces of resilience, because that's essentially what it does, the 150 con perk, it's 10% uh, less damage taken from crits. It really helps you take these fights in your favor. All right, but anyways, let's start from the top to the bottom. And we've got strength. So obviously, Anything above 100 strength is nice, but you want to have a borderline 100 strength minimum. And why is that? Let's start with the 50 strength perk here. So we've got 10% bonus damage to physical, light, and heavy attack. This works for both your spear and your sword. So straight away, great start here. Your left clicks are going to do a lot more damage. Pretty obvious. We don't have to talk too much about this. Let's go to the next one. 100 strength. Okay, 5 damage extra for your slashing and strike damage. This here doesn't really affect your spear in any way. However, there are uses it for the sword itself. So obviously left clicks, just if you don't heavy, because heavies for swords are thrust damage, but if you just do left clicks, standard left clicks on the sword, they're slash damage. So straight away you're getting an additional 15% bonus damage when you're doing left clicks just straight up with that sword. But on top of that, strike damage, you might as well think, oh, this is absolutely useless. However, in this build here, we use Shield Bash, and Shield Bash is actually considered strike damage. So there is a little bit more damage as well output for your ability. All right, let's go into the dex department now. So we got 50 dex here, 50 dex here, 10 crit chance. 10 crit chance is always good. It's always gonna be effective for your sword. It's always gonna be effective for your spear. It works for your spells as well. Obviously, for the most part of it, you want to kind of start with the backstab, and backstab is always a guaranteed crit, but regardless, when you are man-fighting hunters, or you're trying to fight these ranged DPS users who are trying to fight back by kiting and getting their hits off, um, obviously, you're not going to be hitting them from the back, and having that 10% crit chance does help. 100x, 5% thrust damage. So, 5% thrust damage as... Little as it sounds, it's quite a lot. And the thing is, it actually works with both weapons. Yes, the sword and shield does not benefit too much from the thrust, or you might think that, but the heavy attacks from the sword are also thrust. The leaping strike is thrust. The reverse backstab is thrust. So straight off the bat there, the sword and shield, most of its tools are actually going to be utilizing the thrust damage. All right, so this is the part where it gets really juicy. 
So 150 dex gives you 10 less stamina usage when you touch. Doesn't seem much, but it actually is massive. And this build requires you to have high stamina usage to be able to catch and kill. And we found that this build is just not as effective as it should be. 200 dex, 10% bonus, backstab and headshot damage. The headshot damage is not very useful. Yes, the javelin can do a headshot proc, but it's not something you really want to rely on. Unless you do go for the refreshing javelin build, which I will demonstrate that it's actually not useful enough to actually implement it in this build, and there are other perks that are just more effective. However, let's just talk about the stats for the meantime, and then we'll go through that later on. So 10% bonus backstab and headshot damage. The backstab itself is actually insane because with this build here, you'd mostly want to start up from their back, either being for leaping strike, either with just a general backstab flank. With the 250 decks, you have 10% bonus damage to random critical hit damage against stun, slowed or rooted enemies. Obviously coming from the sword and shield, there are a lot of utility there that will proc this. However, from the spear itself, going with the current build we are demonstrating in this build, we're not really going to be utilizing it as much. However, if you are attacking people under, you know, friendly ice storms or just other roots such as screams, then of course this will proc, and it's going to be insane amount of damage when it does proc. So this is the skill tree that I use in my weapon mastery for Sword and Shield. Now, I believe this is the most damage output you're going to be getting, However, there are some great defensive perks on the defender side, but I've really emphasized mostly on the damage because we are playing a hunter build, of course having some defensive perks is nice, but if I can trade them off for a more offensive perk, I will willingly take that. Now, going into this, we have three perks I really want to talk about. Alright, so let's start with Cowardly Punishment and Achilles Heal. These are two perks that essentially gives you extra slows to your abilities or your chain attacks, but it's not just that. Obviously, combined with the 250 decks, you're going to be getting bonus damage. And you also have another perk called Opportunist that also increases that damage on slowed targets. So it's just going to be maxing your output damage when you do set up combos or when you are chasing individuals with your chain attacks or with leaping strike or any other abilities such as the shield bash as well. Alright, now let's talk a little bit about the spear skill tree. So, <laughs> this one's a hard one because spear skill tree, there's just so many good perks. And I've actually tried multiple builds, I, even in my last video that I've created, which is just more of a montage, I actually used a little bit of a different build in that regard. But, okay, let's talk about what I would say the most consistent build, and I would recommend to everyone who's literally either just picked up the spear and wants to try out this build, or has already played the build for quite some time. Let's start with some emphasis on some of these perks. Rupturing Strikes. This is something that you utilize when you are perforating. And obviously if they are above 50% health, they're going to be getting 10% per strike hit. If all three hit, that's 30% rend. 30% rend is actually max cap on the rend with one ability on its own. If you can start off with this ability in your combo setup or if you do see someone CC'd and you do prefer it on top, it's going to allow all your other abilities to do insane amount of damage. You want to debuff as much as possible because it's not just a debuff, you're actually empowering yourself with exploited weaknesses. And it can cap up to 30%, so 3 debuffs is max you can get. Obviously if you hit all 3 perforates, you're going to give you max cap. However, you also have the abilities like Skewer that can help you max cap faster. And this brings me to the next one, Exposed Wounds. And if you do Skewer them and they're bled, you're going to be getting more critical chance. Having a higher crit chance is going to also proc another perk called Exacerbating Crits. And this is a sick perk because it will extend your debuff such as the perforate, such as the bleed. And the bleed is a 15 second duration when you have it all. You can also increase it even more with Bloodletting perk on your jewelry, but we're going to talk about that later. This next perk is actually one of my favorite perks in the game and it's possibly the most undervalued perk I've ever seen because every guide I've seen about Spear, every montage I've seen about Spear, I don't see people utilizing this perk and it might be one of the most overtuned perks in the game and it is Invigorating Crits. Invigorating Crits doesn't seem much on paper, 20 stamina on critical hits, but if you combine with the amount of crit chance you have from the attribute skill tree, from exposed wounds when they're bled by skewer, it's just going to allow you to gap close faster because of the stamina management you have. It's going to allow you to get in and outside of clumps. 
it's going to allow you to iframe more often, it's a must. So the last perk I want to talk about is Aggressive Maneuvers. So Aggressive Maneuvers is one of these perks as well that you don't really notice its effect until you're actually watching your VODs because you're just so focused onto the fight. However, the way it works essentially is every time you dodge into an ability that's hit or it's connected, you're going to reduce all your other abilities' cooldowns by 20%. The thing about this ability is, is unconsciously you're going to be proccing it every single time, either it be by chasing people, by utilizing your dodge into skewer, your dodge into perforate, your dodge into javelin, and you're just going to have way more uptime. Let's talk top to bottom hierarchy here. So, Tuma being the best, reverse backstab being the not so important. We've got Sword and Shield, first of all. And Sword and Shield, they don't really stack. So, if you have Kingling Powder on both the Sword and the Shield, you're only really going to be utilizing one of the Kingling Powers. So, you really want to mix up these offensive perks just so that you get more damage output. Atum and Rogue and Kingling Power are the most impactful perks on this build, and this also applies to the Spear. So even if it is a 2 perker, it's better than a 3 perker with something like Keen, Fortifying, Perforate, and Attunement. You're better off just trading it for a Rogue and Attunement perk. So with the gear perks, Resilient is a must-have, and you need to have 5 of them. Why? Well, you're going to be facing a lot of Assassins, a lot of Fire Staffs, a lot of Bow Users, and all of them have very high crit damage, so Resilient's going to negate a lot of that damage output. You want to have Empowering Leaping, Striking, Thunder, and Javelin. These two perks just really empower your output damage with the Rens and the bonus damage that you're getting from the Leaping Strike. It just makes this build more complete. Why did I have Fortifying Perfect here? Well, it is a defensive perk, but it's a defensive perk that allows you to play more aggressively. It allows you to trade, duel, and survive longer. You can utilize this perk to make sure you continuously fight, or you can just utilize it to try and survive. You could easily make do with just two perkers with this kind of builds. However, if you do have slots to add as a third perk, I would really recommend Shirking Fortification or Elemental Aversion. Make sure to stack one and not go one piece each, due to the fact they really work well together if they're implemented with multiple pieces. Alright, so now we're in the jewelry department here, and let's start with Amulet. This is probably going to be the more expensive one out of the three because there's no real amulet that drops from a dungeon that has thrust protection or slash protection. I know there is a couple of that you can potentially drop with flame protection, but it's just not ideal. If you can get a three perk with thrust, health, stamina recovery, with shrinking power, that'd be great, or slash obviously, but if you can't, because it is a very expensive piece for your gear, then I would just recommend farming the PvP track and try and get the champion's amulet. The reason I emphasize on thrust or slash protection is because you're going to be playing in the outskirts, you're going to be facing a lot of hunters, a lot of dex users, and because of that, you need that protection. Alright, so now for rings. Mortal Empowerment or Invigorated Punishments. I would personally go for Mortal Empowerment just due to the fact that you're going to be getting consistent damage stacks every time you get a kill. Obviously, you need to avoid dying, but in the long run, it's actually worth it. The problem about Invigorated Punishment is that on the outskirt, there's not going to be that many buffs applied on these assassins or these bow users or fire staff users. But on the clumps, of course, there's going to be a lot of them. Sacred Ground Fortified, there's going to be Orb of Protection, there's going to be a Beacon. There's just multiple types of buffs that you can't even really account for within those clumps, but you're not fighting in the clumps. So Invigorated Punishment, even though it's an amazing perk, it's not better than Mortal Empowerment playing as an assassin. I put Thrust Damage and Slash Random Elemental Damage on nice to have here, and the reason why is if I were to have a 2 perk ring, it would be Mortal Empowerment plus Thrust Damage, obviously Thrust Damage applying on the heavies of the sword, Reverse Backstab, Leaping Strike, although going for a random wacky Elemental Damage type like Lightning, Arcane, or even Nature can work, because then you get that 5% extra damage from the ring itself, and you're converting it into a damage type that they might not have any resistance for, and that could be all the worthwhile. So in regards to earrings, I personally use a Refreshing Toast for Regenerating and Purifying Toast. And the main reason I like Purifying Toast is I can get out of the roots, such as the heavy attack from the Ice Golem, it can be a Rend, it can be a Scream. However, if you want to cheap out, there's a lot of earrings actually. You could get the Doom Chances earrings from Genesis, you could potentially go for Barnacles and get the Teardrop as well, which is essentially the same thing as Doom Chance, but instead of Refreshing, you have Refreshing Wood. Or you could also just farm the PvP track one, which is a champion's earring, and you also get the refreshing light doom chances earring, but it's con instead of strength. Alright, so about gems, a lot of it's going to come down to personal preference, and for me, as you guys already know, I'm using Thrust Protection Amulet on Barry and Dry Tree, just because there's a lot of muskets, there's a lot of bows, there's a lot of spears, and it makes a lot of sense to have a lot more thrust damage resistance than strike, you know, slash, or any of the other element types. 
However, here, as you can see by my balances, I have 6.969 baby on elemental damage types, but I also am running a lot of elemental aversion, which means that's actually going to be amplified as well. But at the same time, on Tartarus, I'm actually not using a Frost Protection Amulet. I'm using a Slash Protection Amulet because there's a lot more Great Axe Hunters, there's also a lot of uh, Hatchet players, and not so much Spears, and even the Muskets are not as good. So I tend to use a different approach in that server. Regarding the Weapon Gems, Opal or Wacky Elements, such as Nature, Arcane or Lightning, and this is a really hot topic because in a previous video I used Nature Damage, and I kind of think it was a mistake on Tartarus, but it is a really good approach on Dry Tree. But as you can see here in the next picture here, the nature gem actually really paying off and the damage output is so much higher. But at times as well, when you do have a nature gem and you see the trade-off being about equal from thrust damage to nature, you're better off just using opal because you're going to get that flat 15%. So it really depends on what you see on your server. Let's start off with some easy openers, and something that you're going to be utilizing a lot. Either be by flanking them, either be by setting up a combo, and it's going to be the javelin throw into skewer or the javelin throw into leaping strike. Alright, the next step here is implementing the shield bash. And you can do this from the back, you can do this from the front. If you do it from the back, you're going to get that instant empowerment buff. The next combo is utilized when you don't really have your spear spells up, but you do have kill potential by comboing, and you can use a reverse backstab into leaping strike instead. The next combo is really good when you're chasing people because sword and shield will track, and that last chain attack will slow them, and amplifying your damage for your next combo setup. And now we get to the juicy ones. These are the one-shot combos that if you effectively use them, you can actually bring from 100 health to zero, especially those pesky muskets with bow users. The last combo is implementing a little bit of mix-up that gives you an instant empowerment, cancelling your attack animation and getting that one-shot combo, so you get a 30% boost damage straight off the bat. Let's talk about tracking. Alright, a little tip here for the Leaping Strike and Skewer, if you face your camera down, you have a little bit better consistency at tracking your targets. I love utilizing my left clicks into the preferred because both of them have tracking, so you actually gap close without even utilizing shift. Utilizing a leaping strike and facing your camera the other way will also assist you with getting better tracking. Both the reverse backstab and the shield bash have a grit, but it only really works against top CC, such as the wrecking balls or the sweep, so utilize it into your advantage. The best way to start on heavier users is to utilize your perforate while they're above 50%, that way they'll get an instant max cap rend. Make sure to mix up when you're utilizing javelin throw, otherwise it's going to be a bit too predictable and utilize their field of view to your advantage. One great way of punishing healers who are abusing their sacred ground to their advantage is to CC them outside of the sacred ground by utilizing the javelin throw. Spartans! Prepare for glory! 